Welcome to the Literary Digest. Please subscribe to the channel or give a like and comment on this video if you find it helpful to help us reach more people. Failure is usually something to be avoided at all costs, but leadership and management expert Amy Edmondson invites you to embrace a counterintuitive approach. In this summary, you'll discover how to transform missteps into powerful opportunities for growth and innovation within your organization. The key lies in fostering psychological safety, which empowers your team to take risks, experiment, and learn from their mistakes without fear of reprisal. By understanding the spectrum of reasons behind failures and implementing practical strategies to categorize and respond to them effectively, you'll be equipped to cultivate a failure-friendly culture that celebrates intelligent failures, shares valuable lessons, and aligns incentives with learning goals. By the end, you'll have uncovered a new perspective on failure and you'll be ready to unlock the hidden potential that lies within your organization's setbacks. Chapter 1. Learning to Learn from Failure In today's fast-paced and ever-changing business landscape, the ability to learn from failure has become a crucial skill for organizations to master. This is because embracing failure as a learning opportunity is not only beneficial it's essential for long-term success. Consider the story of a pharmaceutical company that invested heavily in developing a new drug, only to have it fail in clinical trials. Instead of viewing this setback as a devastating blow, management chose to conduct a thorough analysis of what went wrong. They discovered that the failure was due to a flaw in their research process, which they could then work to rectify. By learning from this experience, the company was able to improve its research methodology and ultimately develop a successful drug that went on to help countless patients. This example illustrates the power of embracing failure as a learning opportunity. When you view failures as chances to grow and improve, you open the door to innovation and progress. On the other hand, if you treat failures as something to be avoided at all costs, you risk stifling creativity and limiting your organization's potential. But learning from failure is not just about accepting that failures will happen, it's about actively seeking out opportunities to learn from them. This means creating a culture where employees feel safe to take calculated risks, experiment with new ideas, and report failures without fear of punishment or retribution. One company that exemplifies this approach is Pixar Animation Studios. Pixar is known for its innovative and highly successful animated films, but what many people don't realize is that the company has a culture that actively encourages learning from failure. Employees are encouraged to share their work in progress, even if it's rough or unfinished this allows them to receive feedback and make improvements. It's an iterative process that allows Pixar to constantly refine its ideas and create better products. By fostering a culture that values learning from failure, you not only improve your chances of success in the long run but also create a more engaging and fulfilling work environment for your employees. When people feel that their ideas and contributions are valued, even if they don't always lead to immediate success, they are more likely to stay motivated and committed to their work. Embracing failure as a learning opportunity requires a shift in mindset, but the benefits are well worth the effort. Every failure, no matter how small or seemingly insignificant, holds the potential for growth and improvement. By learning to view failures as stepping stones rather than stumbling blocks, you can unlock the full potential of your organization and achieve greater success than you ever thought possible. Chapter 2 Psychological Safety is Key in order to foster an environment where learning from failure can thrive, people must feel safe sharing their failures, doubts, or imperfect works in progress. This is called psychological safety, an environment where you can speak up, share ideas, and take risks without fear of punishment or negative consequences. When your team members feel psychologically safe, they are more likely to engage in the kind of open communication and experimentation that leads to learning and innovation. Imagine a team meeting where a junior employee hesitates to share an idea because they fear being ridiculed or dismissed by their more experienced colleagues. Then imagine a meeting where every team member feels encouraged to contribute their thoughts, regardless of their level of expertise or seniority. In which environment do you think the best ideas are more likely to emerge? 
creating psychological safety starts with leadership. As a leader, you set the tone for your team's interactions and communication style. By modeling curiosity, empathy, and openness to feedback, you signal to your team that it's safe to speak up and share their perspectives. This might involve admitting your own mistakes, asking questions rather than making assumptions, and actively seeking out dissenting opinions. One powerful way to foster psychological safety is to celebrate intelligent failures. When a team member takes a calculated risk that doesn't pan out, take the time to acknowledge their effort and the lessons learned from the experience. This sends a clear message that your organization values learning and growth over perfection. Another key aspect of psychological safety is creating space for experimentation. Encourage your team to test out new ideas and approaches, even if they don't always lead to success. By providing a safe space for trial and error, you enable your team to push the boundaries of what's possible and uncover innovative solutions to complex problems. The author cites the example of Google, a company known for its innovative culture. Google encourages employees to spend a portion of their time working on passion projects, even if they don't directly relate to their job responsibilities. This 20% time policy has led to the development of some of Google's most successful products, such as Gmail and AdSense. By giving employees the freedom to experiment and take risks, Google has fostered a culture of innovation and learning. Of course, building psychological safety takes time and effort. It requires consistent reinforcement and modeling from leaders at all levels of the organization. But the payoff is well worth it. When your team feels psychologically safe, they are more likely to bring their full selves to work, share their unique perspectives and ideas, and engage in the kind of collaborative problem-solving that drives organizational success. Chapter 3. The Spectrum of Failure when it comes to learning from failure, it's crucial to understand that not all failures are alike. There is a spectrum of reasons for failing which range from blameworthy to highly praiseworthy. By distinguishing between different types of failures, you can respond more effectively and foster a culture of learning and growth. At one end of the spectrum are blameworthy failures, which result from negligence, recklessness, or intentional deviation from established protocols. These types of failures warrant swift corrective action and accountability measures to prevent them from happening again. For example, if a construction worker deliberately ignores safety guidelines and causes an accident, that would be considered a blameworthy failure. On the other end of the spectrum are praiseworthy failures, which occur when individuals or teams take calculated risks in the pursuit of innovation or improvement. These failures should be celebrated and analyzed for valuable insights that can inform future efforts. Imagine a software development team that experiments with a new coding approach to improve the user experience of their product. Even if the experiment doesn't yield the desired results, the team should be commended for their initiative and encouraged to share their learnings with others. In between these two extremes lies a range of failures that are more complex and nuanced. These failures may result from a combination of factors, such as system breakdowns, communication lapses, or unforeseen circumstances. In these cases, it's important to conduct a thorough analysis to identify the root causes and develop targeted solutions. To put these ideas into practice, start by establishing clear criteria for categorizing failures within your organization. Engage your team in a dialogue about what constitutes blameworthy or praiseworthy failures and create a shared understanding of the gray areas in between. This will help ensure that everyone is on the same page when it comes to identifying and responding to different types of failures. Next, develop a systematic process for analyzing failures when they occur. This might involve conducting post-mortem reviews or after-action assessments to identify the key factors that contributed to the failure. Encourage open and honest communication during these reviews, and emphasize the importance of learning over blame. Once you've identified the lessons learned from a failure, be sure to share them broadly across your organization. Consider creating a centralized repository of failure case studies that teams can access and reference as they tackle new challenges. 
By making failure learning a visible and integral part of your organization's culture, you signal that it's okay to take risks and that every failure is an opportunity for growth. Finally, be sure to celebrate and recognize individuals and teams who demonstrate a learning mindset in the face of failure. This might involve highlighting examples of praiseworthy failures in company-wide communications or incorporating failure learning into your performance review process. By reinforcing the value of learning from failure, you create a virtuous cycle that encourages continuous improvement and innovation. Chapter 4. Strategies for Learning When it comes to learning from failure, having a clear strategy is essential. Let's look at several key practices that your organization can implement to maximize your team's learning potential and turn failures into valuable insights. One of the most powerful tools in your failure learning arsenal is the post-mortem review. Also known as an after-action review, this is a structured process for analyzing what went wrong, why it happened, and what can be done differently in the future. To conduct an effective post-mortem, gather all the stakeholders involved in the failure and facilitate an open, honest discussion. Focus on identifying the root causes of the failure, rather than assigning blame, and generate actionable recommendations for improvement. Another strategy is to encourage experimentation and calculated risk-taking. This might seem counterintuitive, but hear me out. By creating a culture where it's okay to try new things and fail, you open the door to innovation and breakthrough ideas. The key is to ensure that these experiments are well-designed, with clear hypotheses and metrics for success. And when failures do occur, be sure to celebrate the learning that comes from them. Take the example of a marketing team that launches a new campaign that fails to generate the expected results. Instead of scrapping the campaign altogether, the team could conduct a post-mortem to identify what didn't work and why. Maybe the messaging was off-target, or the channels they used didn't reach the right audience. Armed with these insights, the team could redesign the campaign and try again, this time with a higher likelihood of success. Another important strategy is to share lessons learned from failures across the organization. Too often, valuable insights get siloed within individual teams or departments, limiting their impact. So consider creating a centralized knowledge-sharing platform where teams can document their failures and the lessons they learned. Encourage cross-functional collaboration and dialogue so that insights from one area can inform and improve work in another. For example, consider a product development team that encounters a significant technical challenge that delays the launch of a new product. By sharing their experience with the sales and marketing teams, they can help inform messaging and customer expectations, ultimately leading to a smoother launch when the product is ready. Finally, don't underestimate the power of storytelling and learning from failure. As humans, we're wired to remember and respond to stories more than dry facts and figures. Encourage your team members to share their failure stories openly and honestly, and celebrate the learning that comes from them. By creating a narrative around failure and learning, you make the insights more memorable and actionable. Implementing these strategies takes time and effort, but the payoff is worth it. Conducting regular post-mortems, encouraging experimentation, sharing lessons learned, and celebrating failure stories, you create a culture of continuous learning and improvement. Chapter 5. Creating a Culture of Feedback and Dialogue Picture a team meeting where a project manager openly shares the story of a recent failure. Instead of being met with criticism or blame, the team rallies around the manager, asking questions and offering insights. Together, they conduct a thorough post-mortem analysis, identifying the root causes of the failure and generating ideas for how to prevent similar issues in the future. The lessons learned from this failure are then documented and shared widely across the organization, informing future projects and decisions. In this hypothetical organization, failures are not only analyzed and learned from, but also celebrated when appropriate. For example, when a team takes a calculated risk on a new initiative that ultimately doesn't pan out, they are recognized and rewarded for their innovation and willingness to experiment. 
This sends a powerful message that failure is not something to be feared, but rather an essential part of the learning and growth process. Feedback and dialogue about failures are also integrated into the daily rhythms of the organization. Managers regularly check in with their teams to discuss challenges and setbacks, and to offer support and guidance. Peer-to-peer -peer feedback is encouraged, with team members sharing their own experiences and insights to help each other navigate difficult situations. To reinforce this culture, the organization incorporates failure learning into its formal processes and systems. During performance reviews, employees are not only evaluated on their successes but also on their ability to learn from failures and apply those lessons to future work. The organization hosts regular failure forums and learning lunches where employees can share their experiences and insights in a safe and supportive environment. The impact of this failure-friendly culture is significant. Not only does it lead to more innovation and better decision-making, but it also creates a more engaged and motivated workforce. When employees feel that their contributions are valued even when they don't always lead to success, they are more likely to take ownership of their work and go the extra mile to achieve their goals. Of course, creating this kind of culture is not always easy. It requires a significant shift in mindset and behavior, particularly for leaders who may be used to a more traditional, failure-averse approach. But with the right commitment and practices in place, any organization can learn to embrace failure as a powerful tool for learning and growth. Final summary The main takeaway of this summary to The Right Kind of Wrong by Amy Edmondson is that embracing failure as a learning opportunity is crucial for driving innovation and long-term success. By fostering psychological safety, leaders can create an environment where employees feel comfortable taking risks, experimenting, and openly discussing failures. Understanding the spectrum of reasons for failure and implementing strategies like post-mortem reviews can help organizations effectively learn from their missteps. Ultimately, building a culture that values feedback, dialogue, and celebrates intelligent failures can lead to more engaged employees, better decision-making, and continuous improvement. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to the Literary Digest for more videos like this one. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you found most helpful. Until next time, keep striving for success.